I mentioned at the top of the show, I went into my creative studio and couldn't find one single bird. There was not one bird to be found in my creative stash. What I did find were butterflies and bugs. So what I did is I took today's theme and turned it into wings and blooms. Let's head on out to the studio so you can see what I created. When I looked around my studio, I could not find one bird, not one dang bird. So what I did is I went into my jewelry box and I found a bee and I found butterflies. So I'm kind of keeping on the theme of today's birds and blooms. Here are some of the basic supplies that I'm using for my art box. Start with just a basic box. This is a wood box that has a lid. I bought this at the craft store. You want acrylic paint to paint your box. And for the base of mine, I rubber stamped my design on. As I mentioned, this was a piece of jewelry that's a ceramic piece, and it did have a pin back on the back, so I had to really work at it to get that pin back off because I want to have a nice smooth surface to actually glue my little bumblebee down. And then I am using mosaic tiles and flat back marbles for the feet on my art box. I am adding a balloon with a stencil. This is a tulip stencil. And then you want a good glass and bead glue to glue your little mosaic tiles together for the feet. And I'm also using 3D crystal lacquer to put a shiny coat on the top. So let's get started. I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial on painting the box. I'm not going to finish painting the whole box, but just in a, in a box like this, I like to use a sponge brush and load it up with lots of paint and the sponge brush works great because you can really mash it into the corners when you're painting. Makes it a lot easier than using a bristle brush. Of course I picked a color today that's very close to my box so I'm hoping you can see that it is painting. So give that a nice coat of your paint. And if you notice, I'm working really quickly. You don't have to labor over this part. Work quickly. So paint your entire box inside and out. Make sure you get all of those little corners. And set that aside to dry. Grab some of your favorite rubber stamps that you can stamp onto the surface of your box. I use a cosmetic sponge and black paint when I am stamping on my art boxes. I like to use acrylic paint because if I make a mistake, I can wipe it off. As opposed to ink, when I make a mistake, I have to repaint. So I'm just dabbing this right into the acrylic paint. Make sure that I have an even coat and dab it right on to the top of my stamp. Here's a little designer tip for you. I have found that when I'm using acrylic paint, I put the first coat on and let it set for, oh, 30 seconds to a minute. And it starts to dry. I find that you get a better impression if you season the rubber stamp first. And I do that by applying that first coat. Let it set for 30 seconds or so before you come back and apply your second coat. Now there's still plenty of paint on my cosmetic sponge, so I don't need to go back and add more paint onto the sponge. I just come in and add that second layer of paint onto the rubber stamp. And there you have your design. Now you will notice on my finished example, I like to use lots of different rubber stamp designs on my art boxes. So dig through your rubber stamps and find all sorts of stamps to layer and lay side by side so you can create some really cool effects.
here's a box that shows you just that. I have, I think I've used like five or six different stamps, rubber stamp designs on this box. So sides, bottom, inside, always put a little surprise inside. You want that little surprise stamp when you open up your art box. Top of the lid, sides, and top. Now you'll notice on this box, it's already really shiny because I make these up in advance and then decide how I want to finish them off. So it's going to work in today's box because I can actually put another coat of gloss over this and I'm going to use my gloss as a glue to adhere my little bee down to the top. So there's not much on here that speaks blooms right now and since that's the theme of today's show, I decided to grab my tulip stencil and these are already sticky so they're reusable, they're self-adhesive and I'm going to just lay it right over the top and press down. This is a really fine detailed stencil so you want to be sure that you have as much of it pressed down onto your surface and because I've used this stencil several times, I've noticed the side is not quite as sticky anymore, but that's okay. We can make it work. Also, what you can do on stencils is there is stencil adhesive that you can put on the back so you can continue to reuse these over and over again more. Coming back with my acrylic paint, black acrylic paint, loading up my sponge. dab straight up and down. A lot of times when I watch my students stencil, they tend to use way too much paint and then they tend to try and push the color, which actually pushes it underneath your stencil. So be sure that you just press straight up and down. Right here where it's not sticking, I'm just using my hand to hold it in place. Same thing here, press down. Looks like I may have to, oops, check here. I just want that petal to be stenciled all the way along the edge. And I managed to put my finger in over here, so let's go back and stencil. Depending on how opaque that you want this layer, you can do one or two coats. So with just one coat, I'm going to be able to see some of the under stamping underneath it. Pull that stencil off. Okay, there's my bloom. Be sure you take this stencil, put it back onto the package or a piece of shrink plastic so that you can preserve the stickiness to the back and wipe off the extra paint. I just use a uh, wet wipe. So you want to set this aside to dry or you can use a heat gun to accelerate it. Just be sure and keep that heat gun farther away because you don't want to overheat the box but this will accelerate the drying time of the acrylic paint. See, that really made that paint dry fast. So grab your hair dryer or your heat gun and you can accelerate that step. As I mentioned, because I'm using the 3D crystal lacquer on this project, I can put a second coat over the coat that was already there. If you were starting from scratch, you wouldn't have to worry about layering your glossy overcoat because you're just putting on one coat. But since this is a box that I had already made and had partially ready, I am ending up adding two coats. Hopefully that makes sense. When you're applying your lacquer, you want to draw a line along the edge and then that helps to keep it from floating over the edge. 
So I draw a line around the edge. Well, kind of a straight line. And here's a hint. When it comes to the area where you're painting, lift that tip up just a little bit because if you run that tip into the paint, you can tend to pull it off, especially when you've accelerated the drawing time like I just did. And because I've painted over the gloss rather than onto the surface of the just the painted box. So fill this in with your glaze. And even though it's a little bit cloudy right now, this does dry completely clear. I'm lifting it up over the painted area to fill in. Almost there. Okay, if you have any bubbles, you can try and pull them to the side. Now it's really, really important that you set this aside to dry undisturbed and uh, because I tend to, uh, if I set it on my work table, I look over and all of a sudden I have a paper towel stuck to it or something else that I've laid down on my table and I've totally forgotten that I have a wet piece. So set up a spot, a drying spot in your studio so you don't do like I do. Here's my little pin that I'm going to, I've taken the back off. This was, I see one spot here of glue that's a little bumpy that I want to pull off. I've taken the pin back off the back and so I have a really nice flat surface to just set it right into the glaze <laughs> or drop it into the glaze. And let's see, I think I want him to be flying towards my flower. So set him down and he's going to dry right in place. I am going to set this aside and show you how I build the feet for my art box. The first step that you always want to do when you are getting ready to glue any of your slick surfaces is take some alcohol and put it onto a paper towel and wipe off all of your surfaces. You want to be sure to remove any grease or dirt that you might have on the glass pieces. Next I decide how it is that I want to stack them. To create an interesting look, you can certainly stack these straight. Or you might want to see if you want them turned. That creates a cool look too. So I take my glass and bead glue and I apply a nice coat onto the bead and I find when I press them together that that squishes it out so that I get broader coverage of the glue. Give them a good press. And on this little art box I am going to put these flat back marbles is the bottom to each of my little feet. So keep building those up until you have all four completed. 
Okay, I have all of my little legs all completely glued together and I've applied glue to the bottom of the box. So let's place them down on the bottom. And you will find that if you're moving along like I am, that these little pieces will shift when you touch them because that glue isn't dry yet. So double check, make sure everything is aligned the way that you want it. I want to make sure you can see it here. So check all of your corners, make sure that they're not hanging over in a way that you don't want them to be. And then once again, you need to let this step set overnight until all of the glue is dry. My Bumblebee and Blooms box is setting aside to dry, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you my Butterfly and Bloom box that's all complete, it's all dry. So I used the same steps to create this box. I painted it and stamped it, stenciled on the top, added my glaze, and put my metal butterfly into the glaze. I added a few rhinestones onto my butterfly and there's my funky feet glued on to the bottom of the box. There you have it. I love celebrating birds and blooms or bumblebees and blooms or butterflies and blooms. <laughs>